Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I was originally planning on tackling that asteroid but we've got 3 days and 11 hours, actually almost 12 hours there, and so I wanted to take care of some other business and I was sort of dissatisfied with where I had left the series because we haven't really done much with our colonies lately and our moon colony is waiting for necessary supplies, especially machinery. And so let's go to the VAB and see what I cooked up to get the machinery there. Okay, so here we have what we're going to send over, except I once again have to lock up the reserve tanks, otherwise we're not going to get proper numbers on this. So, hold on a sec. Alright, and we've got some other innovations I'll talk about, but first the payload. Uh, I've named this the pill. It started out as just this, but then I decided to do more. Especially since it costs so much, I decided that we would have to try and bring it back, and that led to it being, well, less pill-shaped than it originally was. Uh, so, basically it was just this portion here, and then I had to add parachutes, add uh, carbonite tanks, add carbonite drill, add carbonite converter, and so that it can refill itself on the moon, and then after that it'll have to get back into orbit, and it will... Uh, use this inflatable heat shield on top to protect itself on its way down to the surface of Kerbin. Uh, so it'll actually have to flip around, so it'll actually go down this direction first, and then it will uh, use the parachutes to uh, flip itself around. So once it deploys the parachutes, it'll uh, fl uh, fly in the other direction and land uh, st uh, landing strut first. Okay, and so it carries uh, 1,250 units of machinery. Uh, I think our uh, lun lunar base needs actually 1,900, but that's a heavy and very expensive. If we take a look, this machinery uh, costs about 100,000 funds, so we're, it's a very expensive load. Best not to put it on one vessel, and this is already a huge improvement over our egg which was able to deliver only about 160 units at a time. So yeah, this will uh, get a lot uh, get a lot more done. Uh, pipe endpoints to connect it to the base. It only has, well I'd say only, it has 1049 Delta V and so that's why it'll need to make an accurate landing at the base. So that's not easy but uh, hopefully it's doable. I haven't had much practice recently so I'm a little bit nervous about that. Another thing I'm nervous about is because of the way I had to put the Rockmax 487S's on this thrust plate multi adapter here. Um, there's actually a structural element that extends to the stack decoupler here because otherwise the stack decoupler wouldn't be able to attach uh, attach to the pill properly. So it's basically supported on this, which is why there are additional struts here. Otherwise, uh, the second stage of the Maximus is the same. The payload is about 40 tons, uh, and of that, um, most of it is machinery, obviously. Uh, so we're talking about, about, what, 23 tons of machinery? And then the rest is uh, fuel, heat shield, parachutes, etc. So, yeah, going through the rest of the launcher, everything is the same until we get to these. So instead of having structural elements here, because we do have a heavy load, uh, 40 tons uh, to be delivered to the moon on this, uh, we are using SRBs instead of structural elements on these portions, and I am quite nervous about that. But what's a launch if I'm not nervous about something, right? Uh, if I'm not a little bit concerned about my plans, I feel like I haven't done enough that's new. And so this is a little bit new. We are, and so we're going to be recovering these SRBs, obviously. We're not going to be uh, discarding them. Uh, they will be refueled and everything, but they were necessary for for the uh, Delta V purposes as well as for thrust purposes, though thrust not so much. We had 1.13 without them, and so we would have been able to lift off. We had not enough Delta V, and we might still not have enough Delta V. We'll have to see. It depends how much benefit we get uh, from the thrust weight ratio. The higher the thrust weight ratio, the less delta V you need to get into orbit because you pass through the atmosphere and there's less drag as you pass through the atmosphere quicker. So, yeah, it's a matter of how that balances out. 
Okay, uh, it's possible that the first stage of the Maximus won't be recovered depending on how well we get into orbit with that, but it should be doable. Okay, so we're trying to recover everything here, uh, and that's good because of the cost of the payload. Alright, so let's let's send this over to the moon. Hmm, you know what? I've reconsidered something. I, I actually want to slap on those air brakes and try them out as well. While we're here and we're going to be launching the Maximus, I wanted to try out the air brakes. So let me recover vessel and add those. Okay, so I'm adding four air brakes here. We're using the big ones. This is a big vehicle. And I've placed them as you see here. Don't know if that's the best idea or not. I've flipped them around so that uh, when they open, they'll open up uh, this side high. And I've uh, got action group three to raise it and action group four to lower it. You could uh, say toggle air brake, but I believe it can do uh, positions in between fully open and fully closed. Uh, so I want to be able to toggle them separately, uh, the options separately, so that I can control that properly. All right, uh, so we've got that. Let's uh, get going with this then. I think we're ready to go. Let's see if those uh, rocket boosters rip off those fins <laughs> or do some other damage. All right. Well, they didn't blow up the launch pad. That's good. Oh, uh, I did reload the game, so I have to reserve the tank again. Yeah, the RAM was getting a little bit touchy, and it's best not to mess with a launch if the RAM is getting a little bit too close to the top. Okay, looking, looking good so far. The SRV should be providing only a small amount of thrust compared to the mainsails, so them going off shouldn't cause too much of a jitter. So bringing the first stage down again, we're going to uh, probably aim for 24 kilometers again, but use the air brakes to slow us down so that we don't overshoot. We'll try that out. Okay, 120.9. We're okay on fuel. Let's dump the fairings. Okay, good. Hopefully the air brakes will help reduce the amount of burning we need to slow ourselves down during the initial parachute deployment phase. But there's no guarantee of that or of whether FAR will just rip those air brakes right off. I have no idea. Okay, going for... Yeah, that's about 120 on average. Alright, so we didn't have to tap the reserve tank after all. Very good. I think that is pretty much the payload capacity for this launch stage as long as it's carrying the second stage. So, the payload capacity is about 95 tons. Get solar panels out. Let's get the payload solar panels out as well. Okay. So it's all ready to go for its lunar transfer. But let's try out the Maximus one more time. Even though the last episode was sort of a lot of that. We have made changes that might make things interesting. Okay, that's 24 kilometers. Let me check that the uh, ASHI groups work for the aero brakes. Um, no, let's just highlight them. Yeah, they, they're so open in stages as you can see. And you can close them repeatedly pressing the action group. So that's why I wanted to open and close on separate action groups. Okay. So here we go. Let's get to atmospheric reentry. Now, of course, the payload capacity of this can be extended using uh, further SRVs. Of course, we can add four of them, one to each point here, and have a really heavy launcher at that point. 
they'll probably have to remove some of these uh, the strakes if we gotta put really big SRBs because we'd have to attach them here if we attach them down here they can only be about this tall or so SRBs are getting quite hot already I didn't really check what their temperature limit was yes you can use your air brakes to slow down at this point but that would mean I have to fix my trajectory analysis uh, and burn point and the altitude at which I burn so We'll take care of that some other time. Oop. Ooh, that seemed like a more serious explosion. What was that? The air brakes. Huh. Well, well that's a little bit inconvenient. Everybody suggested air brakes, nobody mentioned that they would overheat without being extended. They aren't extended, by the way, they're uh, producing zero drag, right? In fact, uh, these two are positively chilly. It's the ones on the bottom that were apparently too hot to handle. I wonder what happens if we just extend two. We're, we're gonna find out. Because I still mean to test their effectiveness. The SRBs. Okay, I think those were the little elevons. The SRBs do have this little overheating thing, but it's the same kind as the center engine, and we haven't had that be a problem before. Seems like we're coming in a bit low. I thought 24 was good enough to get us to water, but looks like we might not be able to test, well, we might still be able to, but uh, test the air brakes, I mean, because we're not really overextending ourselves. We're not getting far enough. This is unexpected. Uh, even retracted the air brakes. Oh, maybe the drag on the SRBs is just so much different from the drag on the nose cones that are at the bottom of the procedural uh, elements that I had there before. So uh, let me just give a test opening of the air brakes wherever they are. Uh, well they're, they're up. They're not really slowing us down much. They're not they're also not causing us to deviate too much from our trajectory so that's okay. All right, wow, well, we're really, okay. Whoa, oh darn, don't do that. I burned too early. I was looking at the, where the parachutes were. Oh, 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 uh, oh, uh. <sighs> I was looking at my shadow instead of looking at the altitude indication because the altitude indication also uh, is actually from the center of the rocket and I didn't I should make a note of how tall the rocket is um, recover vessel well good thing the Maximus isn't that expensive how we we actually the part that we recovered was the advanced SAS module large and that's 16,000 funds. Is that like most of the cost of the Maximus launcher? That's strange. Well, uh, now I have to do a breakdown of the first stage cost and see what actually contributes the most to its 
I think it was uh, 39,000 funds, right? Weird. Anyway, okay, on with the mission. Okie dokie, here we go. Um, except our fairing is sort of knocking into our vehicle. That's not very nice. Otherwise, a good looking mission. These fairings really hang out for a while, don't they? Alright, anyway, transferring to the moon. The second stage is going to have to get us into orbit, so there's no point putting it into a free return trajectory. We'll have it at this trajectory, 58 kilometers periapsis. And that should be fine. Let's ignite the stage. Somebody noted that the aerospikes aren't really the most efficient thing to use on a second stage, and that is correct. Uh, they are not. I just don't use them very often and I decided that I would try them out. Obviously they would be unsuited to the first stage of a large launcher. They'd be... we'd need too many of them. So this is really the only option. Unless we build a very small launcher, which for colonization isn't really going to be much of a thing. The Sparrow basically takes care of that for us. I guess we could do a uh, aerospike version of the Sparrow. Could look into that. On the return of the Maximus first stage, uh, I think that it was also possible that our trajectory was actually low because our orbit wasn't very circular. It was less circular than on the tests. So maybe that contributed to the fact that we landed so far short. So that in addition to additional drag from the SRVs. Okay, 45 kilometers seems fine. Let's get over there. Okay, we are in Lunar Sphere of Influence and I've got, uh, well, a plot to orbit, but really all we need to do is retroburn at periapsis, so no big deal. Okay, uh, a little bit elongated, 89 by 40. What I think I'll do is I'll actually do the initial descent burn with this second stage, have it separate off the mission, and then and then have it recover itself. Because we, we need an inclination change, we need to get our trajectory right. So, yeah, I think that would be more efficient because we've got all this extra fuel here. Looks like a good approach to me. Okay, let's orient prograde just for safety. Oh, uh, let's. Hmm. Can't decide between prograde and retrograde. Let's go prograde. Okay, the mission should be ready to separate. And we will ignite these engines. And it's on its ascent path. Now, the this stage will have to sidestep a bit. Okay, we should be decently clear of the mission. And that'll be fine. Okay, mission underway now. Now we can't target stuff at the base, uh, at least targeting that one, one we got, the helmet miner caused glitches and I, I'm, t I'm not tempted to try other things out that might cause a glitch so just gonna do the maneuvers by sight, should be very easy to spot the base after all. We also need to land pretty close to the base so that we can hook up the pipe, obviously. This can't be moved around with a rover, so the Moon Master can't handle this. Well, we might just have to keep the engine on indefinitely at this point, considering how slow we're, we're uh, decelerating. Yeah, we're pretty high too. That's the base right there. Not those, the, that's the emergency hand, that's the base. 
taking a very good look at that suicide burn countdown, as well as my remaining Delta V for that matter. Don't have much of either. She also means if I miss this, I don't have much chance to hover around and try and locate myself properly. We seem... I don't know, it's very, very difficult right now to say how we are compared to the base. I mean, I angle the car uh, camera a little bit differently and changes everything. I mean, we'll be within 200 meters, but... I don't. I still haven't discovered the limits of those pipe endpoints. 100 meters per second left of delta V. Okay, kill time. Okay, a real suicide burn for the last bit. Really, a real suicide burn, apparently. Oh, oh. Did we land? Uh. Yes, sorta. Oh, wow. Okay, well, you don't get much closer than that in terms of Delta V left over, do you? Okay, well, we seem to manage to have landed, but can we attach this to the base at all? Well, let's get a Kerbal out and find out. Alright, John Gas Kerman. You guys have to. Earn your keep, as it were. We'll grab the endpoint on the other part, attach it to the base, and then try to make a link. Okay. Well, John Gas is a real Mooner Pro now. Hasn't fallen flat on his face once yet. Oh, uh, can we attach there? Okay, good, good. And uh, we want to link. Ah, oh, it's too far. <sighs> hmm. You know what we need to do? We need to land a new module on the moon and place it between this and the rest of the base. <laughs> I think that's, I mean, obviously, well, okay, we could refuel this right now and then use its own thrust to... yeah I guess we could do that, hold on I want to get out of link mode how do we do that? oh I know I can just grab it that'll get me out of link mode uh, he fell flat on his face but that's because I was going too fast with him come on Mm, grab. We'll, we will attach it to here. We'll have him get up and then we'll move back over to the right. Okay, so let's start drilling for carbonite. Move this over a little bit closer and then do the rest. Mix. So let's fuel up. I'll be back with you once we get a little bit more fuel. Not not all the way because that's pretty heavy. And actually, uh, yeah, its acceleration is pretty bad at that point. And really, we need to dump the machinery before we try and get off the lunar surface. So 
We want only half a load of fuel, I think. Actually, forget filling it to halfway. As you can see, our electric charge is depleting and the sun hasn't quite hit this part of the moon yet. We're in a crater, so it's sort of below the horizon right now. So I'm going to have to cut this short. The refueling, I mean. Perhaps once we get to about 200 electric charge. I have to figure out which direction I'm actually going in to go closer to the base, though. Now, stop that. Retract drill. Converter can deactivate. Has it deactivated? Nope. Okay. Alright, now which way do I have to go? Uh, let's see. Okay, that way should do it. Oh, not that way. Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, stop. More like this way. Yeah. Oh, not the best maneuver I've ever pulled. Thirty ton thing I'm trying to steer like this. Five meters above ground. Actually, no meters above ground. Oh. Well. It's a little bit unclear whether I'm actually on the ground or not. Okay, well, uh, we have somehow spun around. <laughs> that wasn't very helpful. Okay, uh, but... Oh, this is our Kerbal. We do appear to be closer. Enter. Enter is the other way. Why they thought to try to cancel using escape, I have no idea, considering that brings up the menu. Okay. Link. All right. Okay, can you cross under that? All right, let's get him back in before I start trying to mess with the machinery. Board. All right, and now you're in there, and let's transfer some of that machinery already visible here. Okay, so the, that's all full up. So, activate greenhouse. Does that work now? Uh, greenhouse, no space for more something. Hmm. Purify still says missing machinery. That's a bit weird. Wastewater to play. It's just not hooked up to the rest of the base, right? I think. Well, it's got an agriculture module. It's because of this inflation, inflatable habitation module that's not reading right. Uh, let's see. Let's get machinery into the Kerbitat. So that's full up, but uh, it seems like maybe we need we need space for the stuff that these things produce, like the compost and. Stuff like that. Seems like the Kerbitat should be functional, but... I don't know. So, yeah, it says compost full, and we really don't have a compost spot here, so we need, I guess, some place to store compost. Um, Colony Control Center has all its punch cards. I don't think it needs any machinery. The reactor? I guess we don't didn't need 1900. That was only because we've got extra storage for machinery somewhere. 
the power distribution unit seems to have Well, as I say, enrich uranium depleted. This guy right here. But I haven't activated it yet. I guess if we activate it, let's, shall I activate it? Seems like a dangerous thing to do, and we don't really need electric charge, do we? Hmm. Well, let's see. Activate. It says running. But it also says enrich uranium depleted for... Oh... Got to read up more on this stuff. So anyway, we've got we seem to have a lot of machinery now, so that's a plus. I think the reason why I thought that we needed more is because these integrated module bases has have room for more machinery, so we don't actually need any more than we've got right now. What what was our surplus machinery? I hope we didn't bring too much extra. Uh, wow, 700 units. Well, we might as well store it in these module bases then. Okay, that's it. The last of the machinery has been transferred from the storage tank to the base. And so, well, machinery transfer successful. We have done what we came here to do. We've got plenty of spare machinery for future missions, so we don't have to bring it up for a few more times. And... Yeah, so that's a plus, but I still haven't figured out how to get these things working properly. Um, yeah, it's always... Uh, no more space. So we need to send something over with space for, I guess, compost? Hold on, let me... Uh, we don't... I don't think we need a composter. Is, is it good enough to have a... Let's see, activate habitat. Not enough biomass. So we, we need biomass, but this has no place to store biomass. We just need biomass somewhere, I guess. Well, biomass full here. But I think that just means that... Uh, I think it's supposed to produce biomass, maybe. I think it's supposed to produce biomass, and then the curb attack can produce food or something. And the problem is that we don't have a place to store biomass. Let's... Air circulator sounds like a good thing. Is carbon dioxide depleted? That's probably because it's not connected to the rest of this stuff properly. Because we definitely have carbon dioxide. Activate purify. Well, that works. At least purify works. Okay. Anyway, gotta fiddle around with this stuff. But next time, we still have some time before the asteroid comes in actually plenty of time to do more stuff with the moon so let's focus on the moon for a little while that asteroid is the e-class that doesn't uh, get us anything in terms of the contracts the asteroid that really is contract relevant is this one in 29 days so even if we miss the e-class there'll be another e-class the one that i really want to grab is the one for the contract still got a refine laying the first stage of the maximus so that is a thing to do but Let's let's make sure our base is fully functional and able to produce some of its own food, water, and oxygen. That will be very helpful. Also, dealing with Mooner Station 1, I want to prepare everything for the next Duna phase, right? So that we can time warp through to the Duna transfer point, which I believe we have scheduled here. That's 171 days. So right now, our facilities do not all have the necessary food, water, and oxygen in order to survive through that time. And we need to get them ready. Also, transferring these two crew out of the gold bug and into some base module will be helpful. Alright, so those are the things on the to-do list. Many, many things. There are many even more things that I have floating in my head, but we'll leave it at that for now. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.